skeleton do when its lash is popping up? What is up, you guys? How you doing? So, obviously, this is round two of my Halloween tutorials. Um, I just filmed my Sally tutorial about a couple hours ago. Um, God bless it if you watch that video and you made it all the way through. Bless your soul. Because it, it, I was struggling. So I know y'all were struggling watching it. Getting the color of her skin just right was a little bit weird. If you're wondering why I, I'm struggling so hard in these videos, it's because the paint and the cream makeup that I got is actually kind of crap. But I was going for quantity over quality, apparently. Um, but it, it turned out looking okay. It just took a couple extra steps to get it where I wanted it. But this doesn't look bad. This is totally wearable. I think this is totally recreatable. I really hope you all enjoy this video. Um, and I will see you at the end of the video. Bye. Welcome back to part two of my Halloween series. So to start out with, I am taking a nude eyeliner that I just got from Sephora. It's like the Sephora version of the Wide Awake from Tarte. I'm using that to create a line on my face so I can divide which half of my face is going to be um, my glam side and which half is going to be my skeleton side. So this is just me priming my face and I'm going to be using my Wet n Wild um, foundation. This I'm using this particular foundation because it looks really cool on camera. I love how it looks whenever I'm filming and it doesn't take much of this stuff to create a full coverage look. Um, plus I really wanted, this is more my summer color. As you can see it doesn't match me completely which I kind of wanted because I wanted that tan kind of look to stand out stark against the white that's going to be on the other side. So this is just my normal routine. Um, which felt a little bit weird only doing it on one half of my face, but just highlighting, blending, all that good stuff. Now I'm just going to go in and set my face with some of the Kat Von D Lock It Setting Powder. I had this little baby that I got in a little freebie set from Sephora not too long ago. And I'm dancing to some music behind me. I don't know what's happening there. Um, I'm just going to bronze up half of my face using the Sweet Tea Bronzer from Too Faced and one of my Sigma brushes. Who said a skeleton can't have a little bit of blush and highlight too. So I'm just using one of my Sigma blushes and my Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, highlighting palette, the Nicole Guerrero. And I'm using Glow Setter and Forever Lit just to give me a really poppin' highlight. I'm using one of my Tarte Dual Ended brushes that came from a holiday set last year. Now I'm just doing my eyebrows which is incredibly easy when you don't have anything to compare it to because I'm only doing my own my one eyebrow this time. For the shadow look, I wanted to do something a little bit more warm and a little bit more gold in contrast to the cold, cool tone that's going to be on the other half of my face. So this is the 35F palette from Morphe. I don't use this palette as much as I thought originally I would, but for this look it seemed absolutely perfect to use. I'm just blending out some shadows. I'm not going to go into great detail about that because that's not really what this video is about. All I'm doing really is just making it very gold and very dramatic. Now that my wing is perfect, I'm going to put on some mascara, but just a little bit, mainly because I'm putting on some falsies on that side. Now the mascara I'm using is the Troublemaker Mascara from Urban Decay. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. Not going to lie to you. So got my lashes on. Now it's time for the fun part. 
So I'm taking my NYX Jumbo Eye Pencil in Black Bean and I am drawing a circle around my eye and I'm just following the natural contours of my eye. So wherever I feel that hollow in my face around my eye, I'm just following that orbital bone. Now in hindsight, I should have put the white down first. Now that I go back and I look at it, I really think I should have put the white down before I did this. But hey, you live and you learn. So I'm just taking that same black bean eyeliner, making myself look like a panda or a raccoon, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I quickly started realizing, okay, you can still see the inner rim of my eye. So I started blending it out with a smaller brush and getting as close to my lash line as I could without poking myself in the eye. So now I'm doing the same thing that I did on drawing the half of my face, but I'm blocking out where I'm going to be putting black on my face. This just helped keep it a little cleaner and not as messy. And the good thing about that liner is it comes off super easily. So if you mess up, you can just rub it off and it'll be fine. I'm using just a white cream face makeup. This is why I would recommend if you're going to actually do something like this, splurge a little bit and get some face makeup that actually works because I kept alternating in between this cream makeup and a because it obviously as you can see it wasn't as pigmented as I thought it was going to be so I would alternate between that and the white grease makeup because I thought the white grease makeup would be a little bit more pigmented and it just I was having a really hard time with it it did not want to be as opaque as I wanted it to be so I kind of had to wing it a little bit. But I think the end result ended up looking really cool and really nice. Um, I'm just drawing the nose area now. It was driving me nuts because my head was slightly tipped to one side while I was doing it. And it ended up making my nose look a little crooked. So easy mistake to fix. I'm just taking a black eyeliner and just drawing that line over top of the nude line that I did. Just to create some definition. And I'm going to go back and shade that later. After I filled in that area with some black, I quickly realized, you know, I probably should go ahead and set this white really quick just to keep it from moving around too much. So I'm just taking some baby powder. Um, let me tell you, my my pores were clogged after this, but I'm just taking some baby powder and um, mattifying it down just a little bit. I didn't want my skull to be too shiny. So now I'm just going and getting as close to as I can to that line that I created just so it looks a little bit more opaque. Like I said guys, I was struggling with this. So if you're gonna do this, spring for the good stuff. I'm just saying. Now I'm going back over it with some black liner. I'm just going to go right over what I did the first time with the nude liner with the black just to give it some shape and make it look kind of hollowed out right there. Okay, so I actually kind of messed up here. I brought my mouth area, the hollow in my cheek, a little bit too far down. As you can see, it's going onto my lip. So I literally just went right over top of it with some white makeup. This is, I show this because I want to prove a point that if you mess up with this kind of thing, it's pretty easy to fix. So I wiped that section of my mouth off. I'm letting it dry for a second so it won't get so crazy later on. And I'm just legit just wiping it off because I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to start over. I'm going to try it again. Coincidentally, the cream makeup looked a lot more opaque in this section than it did any other time I was putting it on my face. So I then in turn had to go back and fix the rest of my face. Now you'll notice on one side of my face, it you can see two little red bumps. I was breaking out so bad when I shot this video and those two little red bumps, it didn't matter. They weren't even zits. I don't know what exactly they were. But it didn't matter how much makeup I put over top of them, they still were showing up. So, whatever, the skeleton now has it. It's fine. It's not a big deal. But, like I said, this was an easy fix with that um, 
black coming down too close to my mouth. All I did to fix that was just take it off and I took some of the black on my finger and I just started smudging it down towards my mouth starting at the highest point of my jaw and kind of dragging down which you'll see here in a second. Okay, so now I'm starting on my mouth. So I took some of that white makeup and I just went over top of my lips just to kind of block it out a little bit. Um, looking back, I wish I had kind of made my lips a little bit more white because I can still see the color of my lips showing through a little bit. Um, so if you do this on yourself, I would recommend going out and putting a little bit more of that white on your lips. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just shading parts of my face and going along that line with some darker shadow you'll notice here in a second that I kind of stop and look and this is the exact moment that I knew that I messed up I missed an entire section of my nose with the white makeup so I had to go back over it with a q-tip as carefully and as slowly as I could not messing up anything else and just go over that and fix it I was so aggravated at myself for doing that and I just go back and I finished shading um, with the mouth, I didn't really create teeth. All I did was draw the lines and just tried to keep it as symmetrical with my teeth as I could just to make it look as realistic as I could. Um, after I finished shading, I just went around my eye socket with some black shadow just to kind of set it in place so it wouldn't move. And here in a second, I actually do that to my jaw as well just to keep it in place, just to keep it from moving. And this is a really practical way that if you plan on wearing this makeup out and you plan on wearing it for a long time, this will keep it on for a really long time too. That's basically it you guys. This skull half human thing is feeling herself in the best way possible. Um, I really really liked doing this look. I thought it looked really really cool. I kind of want to do this again um, at some point. I might wear this out, who knows. But I really hope you all enjoyed this video and thanks so much for watching. That took a lot longer than I planned too. I always think these looks aren't going to take as long as they do, but they always end up taking way longer. I did a sugar skull back forever ago. I liked it and I liked the idea of the skull and I know somebody requested I do something with the skull. I didn't want to do my whole face as a skull and I wanted to give it a little bit more of like an edge kind of look. I'm still considering putting in some like stitching lines to make it look like if you wanted to do that you totally could if you wanted to add in some stitching lines to make it appear that your face is like stitched together. Um, you could definitely do that. This actually turned out a lot cooler than I thought it would. And it actually the hardest part is to make sure that white is just opaque. That was the hardest part. I really had a lot of fun doing this makeup. My dad just got home, so I'm going to go scare the bejesus out of him. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye!